Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing uh, the DNA intercalators as anti-cancer chemotherapies. Okay, so we've seen now that what DNA intercalators do are they slide into these slots between uh, organic base pairs in the DNA uh, double uh, helix, basically. Okay, now when they sit there, they're kind of fussy. They would like to interact nicely with the uh, organic base pair above them and also the organic base pair below them. And they can best do this if the two organic base pairs are nicely set on top of one another, which they are not usually because of the twist in the DNA, the fact that it winds around. Okay, so what they end up doing is reducing the twist of the DNA like so. They'll bring this uh, organic base pair that's above they'll twist it back round so that it now sits above the one below, or at least more above the one below than it was originally. So they basically end up unwinding the DNA, and when you change the topology of the DNA, then proteins which uh, used to bind to the DNA stop being able to bind to the DNA, because the proteins bind to the DNA when it's got this exact right conformation, this exact right amount of twist. If you untwist it like this, are the proteins going to be able to recognize that structure anymore? No, is the answer. Now, what sort of proteins need to be able to bind the DNA? Well, firstly, RNA polymerase. So, basically, if we have our DNA here, okay, so here's our DNA. RNA polymerase usually binds to the DNA, okay, so we'll show this happening. So here's our DNA again, and where should we put this enzyme having bound? Um, wow, it's difficult. Um, I don't know, I'll just have to shove it in somewhere. So that's um, RNA polymerase. I'll put some colour on it, that'll improve it. So here is RNA polymerase in red here. Okay, and it will then open the DNA and start producing mRNA. Now, if RNA polymerase cannot bind to the DNA because uh, the DNA has unwound like this, then are you going to be able to transcribe any of your genes, basically? Are you going to be able to make mRNA from your genes? No, is the answer. Now, in order to make the protein for which your gene encodes, you need RNA polymerase to bind to the DNA, produce mRNA, and that mRNA has to be turned into DNA. So I'll just remind you of the central dogma of biology. So RNA polymerase works its way along the DNA, creates a piece of mRNA, so this is mRNA, and then that mRNA is transcri sorry, translated. This is the process of transcription. It's then translated by a ribosome, so here is a ribosome, here's the mRNA, and it will turn it into a protein. So let me add some colour on here to make it look more interesting. So in vivid purple here, we have the mRNA strand going through the ribosome, and coming out of the ribosome, we then have our protein in blue. Okay, so in order to produce protein, you need RNA polymerase to be able to bind to the DNA. And if RNA polymerase can't bind to the DNA, and it can't therefore produce the mRNA, so you can't produce protein. So when you have these intercalators going into the cell and going into the nucleus and intercalating the DNA and causing it to untwist, you stop protein synthesis within that cell. So this means protein synthesis goes down. So where should I put this? Protein synthesis goes down when you untwist the DNA. Now, in cells which are going to divide, so for instance in cancerous cells, protein synthesis is absolutely necessary. So basically, when you stop protein synthesis in cells which are just sitting quiescently, so let's say um, Oh, a quiescent cell, I don't know. Um, some skin cell, maybe. Uh, well, actually, no, skin cells aren't quiescent. Uh, it's difficult coming up with an example of a quiescent cell. We'll say a myofibre, some skeletal muscle cell that um, isn't doing much because you're not actually exercising it that much. Okay, so some quiescent cell, does it need to be producing protein? 
Well, not really, basically, is the answer. If you're obviously doing exercise, then the skeletal muscle self uh, isn't going to be quiescent anymore. Uh, but if you're not exercising that much, then the cell will be pretty quiescent. So it doesn't matter that it won't be able to synthesize new proteins. But if you've got a cancer cell here, which is rapidly dividing, so it's continuously going through the process of dividing into two, then basically both of these daughter cells have to have a copy of every single protein that is essential for life. So all of the enzymes involved in metabolism, all of the receptors, all of the signaling cascade proteins, all of those are going to have to be copied, basically. You're going to have to make a duplicate copy, okay? So, basically, cells which are rapidly proliferating have very high levels of protein synthesis because they have very high requirements for protein synthesis. And if you stop protein synthesis in these cells by uh, unwinding the DNA with a DNA interclator, you are going to stop cell division. So this is going to cause cell division to stop because you can't do it if you can't actually produce all the new proteins for the new cells, basically. Um, because fundamentally, what is cell division about? It's about making two cells. Cells are made of protein. If you can't make protein, uh, well, they're made of other stuff as well, but if you can't make proteins, then you're pretty stuffed, basically. You can't cop make a new cell without proteins. Okay, so, uh, the other thing, the other major enzyme that's going to need to bind to DNA is DNA polymerase. So in dividing cells especially, uh, you're going to have to copy the genome. So if you're going from being one cell to two cells, you're going to have to copy all of the genetic information in this first cell. So you're going to have to copy all of the DNA. And in order to copy the DNA, you need DNA polymerase to bind to the DNA. So here is DNA polymerase in blue. Okay, now if you have untwisted the DNA, unwound the DNA, then DNA polymerase might not even recognize the DNA anymore. So it won't be able to bind, and therefore you won't be able to replicate the genome. And again, if you can't replicate the genome, it's a fundamental, basically, uh, then you can't divide in two, because one of the cells is going to end up with no DNA. So it's not a cell, really. Well, hmm, hmm. Sorry, that's a little controversial, because red blood cells have no DNA. Um, well, they have no nucleus, at least, anyway. I don't know whether or not they have DNA. They probably do have a little bit. Um, but they have no genome, anyway. Um, but the point is that you're not going to be able to replicate... You're not going to be able to um, undergo cell division if you can't replicate your genome. So both of these effects... Uh, from unwinding the DNA are anti-proliferative, so they're going to stop the cell from being able to divide. Now, there's no reason that doxorubicin and dornamycin will just do this in cancer cells. They will do this in whatever cell they get their hands on, basically. Uh, so, they're not nice drugs. They are unwinding the DNA in all of the cells of your body. So, they are quite scary drugs, in fact. But they do have a very powerful anti-proliferative effect and are very good at stopping cancer cells from dividing. Okay, so we'll uh, call it there for this video. And in the next video, what we'll look at is the side effects of dot so rubicin, and we're not actually going to talk about this stuff causing side effects. Of course, this is going to cause side effects, but these are the same side effects as you have in all chemotherapies, basically. Any drug which stops cells from proliferating, unless we can actually specifically get it to be delivered only to cancer cells, is going to cause side effects all over the body, basically. So, these are the standard chemotherapy side effects. You know, the loss of hair because the cells that make the hair aren't going to be dividing anymore once you've given this drug. Things like that. Uh, we're going to look at the side effects, the cardiomyopathy side effects, which are specific to the amphocyclines, doxorubicin and dornamycin, because those are uh, more interesting.